Family Fall Festival Written by Lemon Lily B And read for you by Eleanor Elizabeth Summary Peter, Morgan, Tony and Pepper go to a Family Fall Festival Written for the Halloweeny prompt Fall Fun And for the Flufftober prompt Hot Chocolate Daddy! Tony smiles, leaning down to turn the water off when he hears his daughter's voice coming from down the hall. He dips his hand down past the bubbles to check the temperature, then listens as Morgan's footsteps grow closer, and keeps an eye on his bedroom door as he grabs a hand towel to dry his hands. Morgan bursts into Tony and Pepper's bedroom a second later, clutching an orange piece of paper in her fist. She tries to climb onto the bed, but she's still too short to make it, so she settles for leaning her stomach against the foot and waving the paper in the air. Pepper laughs softly from where she's sitting on the side of the bed, and Tony emerges from the bathroom. I heard my name. Pumpins! Tony takes the half-crumpled paper from her grip, smoothing out the flyer and nodding his head at the image of a cheerful jack-o'-lantern. Yep, that's the fall festival your mama organised. Morgan turns to Pepper, her eyes wide. Mama, I want a pumpin! Pepper laughs and nods her head. Yes, baby, you will get to paint a pumpkin. We can paint one together as a family. Morgan reaches up and points to the word on the flyer. Family! Family, yep, good job, pumpkin, Tony says, grinning when Morgan giggles at the word pumpkin. You, me, and Mama. And P.E. Morgan beams. Tony and Pepper exchange amused glances. And Peter. Tony smiles, crouching down in front of her and tucking a strand of her hair behind her ear. The whole family. Morgan nods seriously, then shrieks when Tony scoops her up into his arms to carry her into the bathroom. Bath time! Later that evening, Tony heads down to the lab and calls Peter. How's my favourite college student doing? Hmm, good, Peter replies. Really good now that I'm talking to you and not working on this essay. I need a break. Tony smiles. You know, you can call any time for a break, he says, and Peter huffs out a breath. Oh, I know, but if I called you every time I wanted a break, I'd never get my homework done. What are you up to this weekend? Tony asks. Pep organised this fall festival thing for the company, he explains. A family fall festival. And Morgan just learned how to read the word family, among with about another hundred words this week. Smart kid, just like her parents, Peter chuckles. She's smart like her brother, Tony adds, and Peter snorts. Anyway, I know you're busy with school, but Morgan is very insistent that the whole family is going to attend. He can practically hear Peter's smile. I'll be there. Pumpkins! Morgan's squeal rings throughout the chilly autumn air. Peter matches her excitement, carrying her over to a table covered in a plastic tablecloth and pointing out the different bottles of paint to her as she proudly names the colours. There's already paint everywhere, and it makes Tony cringe just looking at the mess, but he watches fondly when Peter turns and scans the area until he catches Tony's gaze, giving a little wave and a smile, a streak of paint on his cheek from where Morgan has already accidentally gotten him. Tony returns the wave, then looks over at Pepper who politely extracts herself from a conversation to come and stand with him. He wraps an arm around her waist, and they watch Morgan and Peter paint a pumpkin together with matching grins. You really outdid yourself, he tells Pepper, soaking up the giddy feeling that warms in his chest when he looks at her and sees the way she's watching their kids. When they're done painting, Peter gives Morgan a thorough wipe down with a paper towel before releasing her to run to her parents. She leaps into Tony's arms and wraps her arms around his neck. Oof! Tony grunts dramatically, making her giggle. Pete and I made it a pumpkin! I saw, sweetheart. You did a wonderful job. But where is Peter, hmm? The three of them look around, but Peter is nowhere to be seen. Morgan squirms for Tony to put her down, and he takes her hand, taking a few steps into the direction of the painting table and scanning the area while Morgan tugs impatiently on his arm. Just as Tony is about to call out for him, Peter walks over, a cup of hot chocolate in his hands. Hi, he says brightly, blowing across the top of his cup and shivering a little. Hey, Pepper replies. We were wondering where you went. Come here for a second. She rummages around in her purse, pulling out a small pack of baby wipes, and Peter takes a step closer. His eyes widen when she pulls one out and she reaches up to wipe the dried paint from his cheek. 
and Pepper pauses halfway through, her mouth falling open. Oh, I'm sorry, she laughs and continues to scrub at his face until he doesn't pull away. I'm sorry, my mum instinct kicked in. There was paint on your face. It's okay, thanks, Peter says softly, his eyes sparkling. He shivers again, and Pepper frowns slightly. My mum instinct wants to zip up your coat, she says, and Peter laughs. I'm okay, he assures her. He holds the hot chocolate closer to his chest. I've got this to keep me warm. Oh? This is the best part of fall, Peter responds, cupping both hands around the steaming paper cup. Hot beverages. Earlier, when you were eating soup, you said the best part of fall was the hot food, Pepper teases, and Peter blushes slightly. I like to be warm, okay? He defends, but his smile is wide. He blows again on the hot liquid to cool it off, and then takes an experimental sip, looking down when he feels something tugging on his jacket. Hi, Mo. Morgan rubs her open hand on her chest in a circular motion to sign please, reaching up with her other hand towards the hot chocolate. One some! Peter squats down in front of her, taking another drink of the hot chocolate to gauge the temperature. Shh, he says in a stage whisper. Don't tell your mama that I'm feeding you sugar. He blows on the drink one more time for good measure, then holds it to Morgan's lips so she can take a sip, the corners of his eyes crinkling at the way she grabs with both of her hands and tries to get more of the sweet beverage. Okay, Peter laughs. That's enough for you, sugar monster. He stands and drains the rest of the cup, shooting Tony and Pepper an apologetic look. P.T. Morgan looks up at him with wide, pleading eyes, and she taps her fingers together to sign more. Let's go look at the jack-o'-lanterns, Peter redirects, and Morgan's face lights up. She hops in a circle around Tony, while Peter goes to toss away his now empty cup into a trash can, then looks between the three adults and lifts her arms up high. That's all you, Pete, Tony chuckles, and Peter lifts Morgan up onto his hip, carrying her over to a display of carved pumpkins. So, what are you going to dress up as for Halloween, Mo? Morgan snuggles into his side and looks at the pumpkins in front of them. A bulldozer! A bulldozer, huh? I bet your daddy is going to make you a super cool bulldozer costume, Peter smiles. Daddy isn't making anything until a day or two before Halloween, Tony says from behind them with a chuckle. Yesterday, she wanted to dress up as a pumpkin. Last week, it was an excavator. She changes her mind too much for me to commit to making anything just yet. This morning she wanted to be a traffic cone, Pepper adds. Hmm. Peter rests his head on top of Morgan's, tightening his hold on her. I think you'd make a great traffic cone. Morgan nods her head underneath Peter's chin and yawns, and he smiles. He starts to walk again, gently bouncing her as he carries Morgan along the line of jack-o'-lanterns, keeping his pace steady and slow. When he shivers again, Morgan starts upright for where she'd been almost asleep, her head just barely missing knocking against Peter's jaw. She looks around with a wide yawn and sleepy eyes. Okay, Pepper says softly, one hand coming to rest on Peter's back. You're getting cold and she's getting tired. Time to head home. Mmm, Peter says, stifling a yawn of his own. He pauses, eyes drifting to the side, and Tony follows his gaze as he stares longingly in the direction of the coffee cart. Tony nudges Pepper with his shoulder, tipping his head towards Peter with a glint in his eye, and Pepper lifts a hand to her face to hide her smile. After a moment, he reaches out and pats a hand on Peter's shoulder, startling him out of his daydream. "'Go get yourself another one,' he says, rolling his eyes, and Peter ducks his head down, face flushing slightly. "'We all know you want more. We'll meet you by the car.' Peter nods, letting Tony take Morgan from him, then practically skips to get more hot chocolate, leaving Pepper and Tony to laugh fondly as they watch him go. When he returns to the car, he has another cup of hot chocolate in one hand and the colourful pumpkin he and Morgan painted in the other. He holds up the pumpkin to show Morgan, who's getting buckled into the car seat by Tony, and she gives him a sleepy smile, holding out her hands to take the brightly painted pumpkin. She cradles it close to her chest, closing her eyes as Tony tucks her hair behind her ear and kisses the top of her head. My pumpkin. It looks beautiful. You two did a great job. Pepper says, wrapping her arm around Peter's shivering frame. Please zip up your coat. Peter nods, letting her take the cup from him so he can zip up his coat. Then he climbs into the back seat and fastens his seat belt, grateful for the warmth of the hot chocolate and the heater in the car. By the time they get back to the tower, both Peter and Morgan are sound asleep in the back seat, their fingers intertwined and the pumpkin resting on the seat behind the two of them.